Yo, 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 how's it going? This is Philly Phil, also known as Bull Boy. Uh, yo, 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 how's it going? This is Philly Phil, the host with the most. Uh, I'm here with the uh, the man of the hour, the one and only, uh, the MPUA, the extraordinary Rob Beck. How's it going, buddy? That's quite an intro there. We, wow. want, we wanted a little jingle at the start, but seeing as this is our first podcast, we, we, we thought we'd just go straight in on it. I've got to tell you, Rob, uh, one of the greatest openers that you've ever given me, and you've given me loads, and you have loads, but one of your original openers was Would You Rather Be Wanted and Needed. Do you remember that one? Yeah, that's yep. a, that's a, that's a now, classic. Now, I've time. got a good one uh, that, I've, that I've thought of uh, that spins off of that. Bring it on. Do you want to hear Bring that? Bring it on. So... You can be wanted or needed, but would you rather be, and this is a question I want to ask you, would you rather be hated or forgotten? Oh, that's a tough one. So, I don't you know. don't have to answer me right now, Bob, but uh, see, I'm just giving Bob some keynote so that he understands <laughs> he's, he's, what we're doing. He's keynoting me before I'm talking, <laughs> so he can just keep talking. It's a little tactic just to be able to keep <laughs> keep the crowd moving in your direction <laughs> and i know by the look on his face that he liked that he liked that you liked that so uh well he liked the opener i don't know if you liked it well i think that. you know like when you when you say that to a girl you're going to invoke many of those uh, emotions aren't you sure so you that's what you want you want them to feel some sort of emotion and have a different question than they're used to it's very open-ended so they they don't just go yes or no and i think um well do you know the opposite of of love what do you think the opposite of love is well uh i would say uh just from a a substandard uh uh, educational point of view it would be hate it's actually indifference Uh which is basically ignoring you is that because hate and love are actually very uh closely related aren't they and they involve the 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 same feeling emotion is jealousy Uh believe it or not the green eye monster Ruins many a relationship. Would that be uh, envy also included in there? I mean, uh, I think envy and jealousy it's, it's, is quite related. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sub. It's a sub modality. But anyway. So I, I would pick hated because listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna do well in life, you're gonna get a lot of haters as well. Yeah. But if you just don't even exist in life properly, well, you're gonna be s- indifferent, and no one's gonna know you ever. Well, absolutely. Uh, they do say it's a thin line between love and hate. How many relationships have you had that were, you lo- you were loved one day and then you were hated the next, and then you were loved the next day after that? Uh, so <laughs> more than hot dinners. Exactly. So Bob, I wanted to uh, uh, to ask you a few questions. Um, about Bill knows me as Bob as well as Ben yeah. because we've been uh, swinging for about fifteen years. I hope no one minds. Sure, but, they don't. Uh, Bob, Bobby, uh, Becky. No, I don't well, as soon Becky. as you're hosting the show, you can call me what you want. Yeah, I don't call him Becky. Uh, <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, I don't think he'd be too happy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Bob, uh, just quickly let me know. Tell us, tell the audience, our people out there, how you got involved in in games. Ooh. Um, so, twenty years ago. Because it was summer 20 years ago when I was 19. The summer or not. of, do you remember what year that, 20 years? Uh, it, I, 97? Think it, I think it was, um, I think it was June. It might be May even. I can double okay. check with my friends because uh, there was five of us around a table in somewhere called like the, the Round, round table. table. Wow. Yeah. So we called Did ourselves. Did you have a friend called Arthur? Uh, no, no, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a Steve. <laughs> Steve. Uh, and... Um, Basically, yeah, we called ourselves the Palins because we're around this round table, table and this guy called Blade. The Knights. The Palins were Knights, yeah. right? Yeah. This guy called Blade, a friend of mine, he goes, um, I see I see that you, you're in, like, you seem like you want to be really social with people. You're really talkative around us, but you're not really really talkative too much around strangers. But yeah, I can see you throwing your comment here and there and trying to get involved. He goes, there's, there's, this, uh, there's this person called Ross Jeffries. You should re- read some of his uh-huh. articles. So I was like, okay, yeah. Back in the day, they were printed out. Yeah. Yeah. You had to go to the library? And I would well, go he, he got me copies somehow. I don't know how. And, and, and then I eventually, about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually a, a tape, a tape was called, well, yeah. a an tape actual cassette. Tape, tape. Yeah, a cassette that you put in old school cars. Yeah. Old You're old, Rob. Uh, Rob is really old, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. It's, it's showing out. And, and because I understand exactly what he's talking about, that means I'm old too. 
yeah. maybe even older. Forty this year. Um, you are. Yeah. Rob, I've been doing birthday. game longer than I haven't. Un- that's incredible, that's and that's why all that experience and expertise and skills he's he is uh, sharing and uh, giving the world a slice of the best game that you could ever get. Well, I just think I, I've I've seen it through the ages. So I've seen it through you know the twenties, even the teenage. I got I, I got a taste of it at nineteen, and through my twenties through my 30s now and now I'm going to hit my 40s so, so what was it about Ross Jeffries that um, got you to really you know think that this was well I think the main thing life was just changing. learning the principles of games so there were certain set principles the do's and don'ts and as long as you followed them rules until you you got really good and you, you mastered a lot of it then you can break the rules but was people think they can just break the rules yeah and also you also get the very experienced gamers because we used to hang out with them all and they would always get a bit annoyed that we were getting better results and and i know why the re- the reason is because they never went back to practicing the basics because they because some of them had an ego trip about it sure they did and they're like well you know I, I have always been able to get better girls than i'm getting now and how comes this girl's rejecting me now and it's like bruce lee you'd yeah, always yeah, yeah, practice yeah. the kick punch every day it's not like it's just gonna go right i'm only gonna do triple round houses every day you know you have to warm yourself sure. up sometimes sometimes you're feeling bad about things and you've got to spice it up when you're at the beginning of anything, you I think that's when you are at your most hungry, hungriest. Totally, yeah. And uh, you're so willing to try new things and uh, test your boundaries. When you're a little bit more experienced and you've uh, seen what works and what doesn't work, sometimes, in a funny way, your game can get worse. Yeah. Because you're be not... Dipped you're not giving the same type of uh, effort that you did in the beginning. You're not putting the same amount of energy in. And what always worked for me, especially at the beginning, was the fake it till you make it kind of mantra. So, yeah, you don't know, you don't have all the skills, you don't have all the uh, the answers, but you kind of fake it in a way. And then you make it. And that's how uh, that's how uh, it, that worked for me. And it, it, it seems like it might have worked for you at, uh, initially, anyway, until you became. Yeah, I mean, I've had I've had dips. We've all had dips, uh, but that just shows that anyone can do it. We can all recover from our dips and carry on. But some people are just like, oh no, I've you know I've I've lost the skill set, and it's not true. You just got you got to start from the beginning again. But I think people have if people that have practiced a lot, they have something that I call game memory, like muscle memory. Of course. So when you've worked out and you've got to a nice standard, if it does all go from and you, you start eating uh, pizzas every day yeah, for the next six months. Exactly. And be- yeah, I mean it's like anything. If you literally stop training, you're gonna forget how to do it. Even if you stop driving a car for a few years and you get in it, you're gonna be like, oh, sh- you know, it's not gonna be automatic. It's not gonna be unconscious competence, and that's the level you want to get to. You want to do it where you know it just does it for you your brain and your body language just does it for you and that's because you've practiced practice 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 and you know what they're going to say and usually most of the time your wits very fast you're in a talkative state you know how to direct your body language push pull etc bob absolutely uh and i can contest for that i was married well i was in a relationship basically married for a total of seven years and I know I lost my wingman for seven years. Yeah, and uh, when I that's right, mystery took your place. <laughs> well, you had to get a, a man just as good as me, if not better, <laughs> huh? So you did well there, Bob. Um, but moving on here, when oh, I you're back, yeah, I'm back now. So when I did get come back, I was so out of practice. It was like having to to walk again, basically learning how to walk, mm. and I was so rusty. And I made the same mistakes I used to make when I first started out. Like you said before, I still had that muscle memory, so to speak. Yeah, of course. But you know more than anyone that game evolves. Times change. Big time. You need to kind of stay 
up to date. I think in the lots game of ways. evolves every six months, or it could be. Sometimes it feels like every four months to me. Honestly, luckily I'm always creating stuff. But yeah, uh, for someone to just rest on their laurels and think what they were doing ten years ago is still uh, adequate to do today, I think I'm sorry, but you're not you're not cutting it. The principles still work. Yes, but the game around it changes like you're still your bones as it were i know everything recycles in the body but the bones are there and this you know the skin and the meat it recycles a lot quicker than the bones so the, see the bones is the principle the core foundation of your house but isn't that as a person as a person don't we want to as humans uh, living in this world to try and evolve to evolve try and it. improve and get better and make you know try to do new different things and you know just improve things overall well, well every time i teach somebody there's three things that i want them to get out of it happiness choice and freedom so i want them to be happy within themselves because if they are they're gonna really get results because other people see them as happy and they're happy anyway so there's no worries in life well no major worries in life Freedom, freedom to do what you want, you know, to have the guts to travel, talk to that girl you want to talk to, you know, be who you want to be. And choice, as in you have the choice to actually talk who you want to talk to, do whatever job you want to do. And that's because you will have such a great yeah. social skill. You can Absolutely. get yourself in major networking positions, let alone gaming girls. This is even network, yeah. super Absolutely. networking. Uh, choice is one it's choice is one that really resonates with me because you have to give yourself the option of having a choice what i mean by that is if you don't have courage if you don't show your fearlessness in going to speak to that girl then you've taken away that choice if you let yourself be stopped from talking to that girl, you've taken away that choice. Yeah. Whereas. Because you don't have her in the first place. So exactly. you don't talk to her, you're still definitely not going to have her. But if you go up to her and you start talking to her, it might not work out. She might tell you to go get lost, uh, maybe even use some more colorful language. But. Which is rare. <laughs> which is rare, yeah, you're right. But you made a choice you you've been able to have a you've choice. opened up some opportunities yeah. there because you didn't have them opportunities and by going to talk to someone you have opportunities now and the thing is there's a good thing um that mishra said to me actually he said um <coughs> women only have the choice of the people that come and speak to exactly. them exactly yeah so you know choose life sure if you think about the the normal sexual strategy uh between men and women, a woman's sexual strategy is waiting. Waiting and Trying hoping. Trying to get some signs, IOIs, indicating. Yeah, and, and they don't do that as much as they used to. Um, before, the, uh, before all the dating apps and everything, where they've got these um, hundreds of imaginary boyfriends on their phone, <laughs> uh, they had to give you a little bit of a little sign, a little, you know, a little wind, IOI, a little you know, look. real IOIs, if they wanted you to come and talk to them. Yeah, some proximity. Now, with vacuum. now that it's harder these days for to, to gain, in my opinion, than it was 10 years ago. Because they don't give you those inputs as much anymore. I think, I, I think mean, it's just different. Yeah. I think it's different, and that's where the cold approach comes in. You master the cold approach in life, and literally, you own life. Once Absolutely. you master the cold approach, everything else will follow, and that's a fact. You will open up opportunities, you'll get better jobs, you'll get better friends, you'll give your family better, you'll get better women in life. Having better women in life gets you better friends, gets you more women. It's just an abundance, and you're, you're so happy that you have the courage to go and do that. The adrenaline rush is amazing because you turn it into a good feeling and not a negative feeling. It's totally like a domino effect, uh, Bob. 
<laughs> just like you said. Uh, if one factor of your life is going abundantly well, everything else kind of falls into its place. Yeah. If you start making a ton of money and, and you start uh, really expressing yourself well with your friends, then you make new friends. And like you said, then you enjoy life so much better, so much more. I mean. Well, th listen, the more friends you have, uh, the more women in your life, the more places you're going to be invited, the more opportunities for jobs you're going to get, the more holidays you're going to go on, the more activities you're going to be included in. Hey, I go in. on enough holidays. No, I know you do. <laughs> and then there's much for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just the cold approach is where we're at. We master the cold approach of talking to a stranger and you literally win life. So, after you were first interested in, in um, Ross Jeffries, how did how did you evolve? Well, um, because it's um, speed stuff is very day game based. I mean, can use it at nighttime as well. It's very good for dates, I find as well. But it's more, you know, a quieter atmosphere and so on, where you've got a bit more time to talk to someone. There's not a rush. So. I, because I love going to nightclubs, VIP places, you know, cocktail bars and so on, and doing night game in general right on the street, you don't have to just do day game in the day, then, or gutter game as we call it at night. Um, gutter game, I like gutter that. Gutter game, yeah. Um, you, I, I, I had to come up with my own ways of doing things, my own, you know, ma modes and phases and routines and openers and body language techniques and so on and so forth so I, I so I did that and I did that for many 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 years and of course I heard about other great gamers you know mystery Tyler and so on who are both extremely good friends of mine now as well and Ross is my great friend as well um, that you know we, we've swapped ideas and, and ways it's, of doing a, it's a testimony to how good uh, Rob is that uh, these legends of the game uh, i.e. mystery Ross Jeffries have looked to Rob and they've they've noticed that he is up to par he is on that level if and you know they might have slightly different approaches to game but there's a uh, an enormous amount of respect between between you all which are uh, as your friend going back 12 years now Fifteen. Uh, Twelve to fifteen. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. Mr. Few being married. Yeah, I don't want to um, make myself out to be that old, but yeah, <laughs> um, makes me extremely proud of how far you've come, Rob. Well, it's just you know you've been in it a while. You've got a lot of knowledge to share. You see the world a bit differently, and we can do that. We can sit down and have a good old chat about it. And the good things is all all, all, all the stuff that we teach. It, because we're all old school, but we're also doing the new stuff as well. We're coming up with new stuff all the time as well. So we can, you know, we mix it all up. We merge it all. Um, I find that we can speak on many levels, and uh, it's all complementary though. All our stuff works together. Like I can go out, uh, me and uh, Mystery and I can go out winging each other, which we've done for like ten years now, and. Our stuff. I'll be using bits of his. He'll be using bits of mine, and you know they just work so well. And he knows what I'm gonna say, and I know what he's gonna say most of the time, unless we're, we're you know throwing in a bit of natural wit and stuff like that, and feeding off hooks. But uh, and the same with Tyler. You know, I go out with Owen, and uh, you know our stuff's complimentary. It works because you turn into a social person that you can feed off people anyway. But Bob, I don't think I think. One of the things that you may not be able to replicate is the fact that you're you are one of the qu quickest guys on their feet, one of the wittiest guys, one of the one of the quickest comeback guys that I've ever heard. Um, and that's you st you're just saying I'm I'm Larry. That's what you're saying. No, Bob. <laughs> your wit. That's Jeffy. that's your quick wit. The, your quick wit is, I'd say, in my opinion, is one of your greatest strengths. Um, and you use that with y all your practice with uh, all the experience that you have with because you're always innovating you're always trying different things out you're always experimenting on top of what you have naturally 
makes me makes you uh you know the person you are today well i don't think mm, your i had to learn to be this way it wasn't all natural i know it's not all natural bob but uh, i'm sorry but you know you you me and you just sitting around uh shooting the shit i can see when you have your little witty responses and quips that's not something that you can you know that that you train yourself that's something that you also inherently have i think you can inherently have it but i think you can also train it because it mo- when i was 19 it was i met you at what age when was it early 20 mid 20s it was about 2018 17 maybe 19 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um i can't remember and you had a lot more hair back then <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it did actually and um I, yeah, I mean, if you'd have met me when I was 19, I wasn't really nowhere near as witty. I was more of a shy, bumbling ginger buffoon. <laughs> but I had the intent of, wow, someone's just given me, like, a way out, a way out, a scroll, a Bible out, something, you know, that gets me but out. Y- so that, but you had that potential was untapped, yeah. and that's what happened, uh, may- right? Maybe, but what, what it was is then I knew that all I had to do was practice and I had to go and speak to people all types of people big groups small groups you know scary groups pretty yeah, groups yeah. you know whatever it was people in the street people in in nightclubs so on and so forth and I would do that and I would talk to every single well at least woman in in the bar so oxygen bar in Leicester Square for example I'd do the whole bar there three floors then go out did you run out of oxygen yeah and then <laughs> went to because you couldn't stop talking then went to zoo bar did the same two floors you were an on the animal floor. yeah and you, you just go and you you know you get so good at it so good at it so good at it because you're practicing and you're learning responses as well and then you can their responses you can use that in your opener for later so you'd be like well but what about that on the wanted or needed you know and and, and you said something a girl's told you maybe an hour ago as your reply because yeah. they might go well what do you think about it absolutely so absolutely i use, I use their sure. responses as well so through all that, you start building up a very fast wit. And it, it's just like a comedian going on stage, right? They've done so many sets. They've used, they're have used they used to so many people heckling them. So we can call that shit tests, right? Yeah. Heckling them that they've got the answers. They can respond, bang, 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 bang. There's not even a flinch in their eye. And that's because it's repetition, practice, and they have the comedy or Sarge memory. Or that's, a great, that's a great point, Rob, because uh, I forgot that that's true. You... Especially when it comes to, in my experience, when it comes to texting, I have a response for pretty much any scenario. Any scenario that I get. Yeah. And and it works beautifully. Yeah, and it's even easier then because you don't yeah. you've got you've got time to think about exactly. it. Exactly. So yeah, totally. So I think anyone can learn it, but they have to go out and start using it so it's not something that you no one can just wake up and go yep that's it i'm a a comedian or no one can wake up and just go yep i'm a pickup artist or or you know or 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 whatever you want to call yourself lifestyle coach or you know social network or whatever they're not they have to practice it whatever you are you have to practice it so it's a lot easier said than done isn't it it's a lot easier said than done but baby steps go out and say i'm going to talk to one person today and then two tomorrow three the next day I mean, I would, I would recommend for someone that has never gone and talked and done any cold approach ever to, to just say hello to one hot girl a day and just say hello. It's enough to start and then giving the you second the mood. Exactly. It's enough to start And just say mood. hello. Yeah. And then maybe the next week you can make it three girls slightly less to uh, each time right exactly okay. but yeah, go on. Uh, what I wanted to, to to go on before was that that's something that I had to, to, to learn myself was getting over that fear because you are your worst enemy and if you you and your ego can get over that me and my ego I always thought Rob had a nice voice that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> so then it became easier of course 
and like anything, right? The, the fear is reduced dramatically. And that's why I say, first day, speak to one person. Next day, two. Next day, three. Imagine you do that for a week, and it's one up every day. And the You'll seventh just... day, it's seven people, right? That's 55 people yeah. you spoke to in a week. You're bound to land into some pussy at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will bleep that out. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe not. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, you just open up more opportunities than you can ever imagine. So, Bob, I wanted to ask you, I have my own rules of game. Um, I'd like to say Ten Commandments, but I think it's more than ten in my, op <laughs> in my opinion. Okay. What would be just uh, one, of, one of your rules um, that you... Um, that you can't break a rule that you can't break that is important to game well I, I really do believe you can break any rule um, but one thing I think is very important is always experiment always always experiment try new things when I get a mode of game perfect I want to then break it and start another mode and then once I've got that mode up to, uh, up to scratch I'll try and merge the molds together so I'm building up a massive sort of network of different ways of game, but they're all spliced and merged together. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That's why Supernatural Game came about, because that was natural game mixed with the pickup skills that you know everyone's been learning for a very long time. So they're the two high-powered modes mixed together, and I got the natural skills by being a you know hosting nights in top clubs. And that came about because I used to, used to go to clubs with hot girls all the time and the manager would turn around and go, hey, if you bring the girls with you every time, I'll pay you, I'll give you a table, you can jump the queue and you'll have um, a bottle of vodka waiting for you when you get there. So I was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'll come all the time. Yeah. And he's a Bob is so cheap, but he, all he needs is a bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> a queue jump is very important when you've got a couple of girls with you. So um, yeah, so that's what I did really. And then I would meet the naturals, and their game was ever so different to the pickup style of doing it. So that was my new contenders. But once I learned how to merge the natural with the pickup skills, my game went through the roof, and that's how natural pickup, yeah, supernatural game came about. And there's been many modes since, many ways of doing it since that I've added on because you've got to keep evolving with this. But yeah, don't just stick to one thing and never change it because you will be left behind you will be left behind. It all comes back to practicing again. Well, experimentation, uh, I totally believe that is one of the best rules. Exactly, okay. and the next one, I'm gonna give you another one. Always, always, always be positive with what you do. If you go back home and beat yourself up about it, and I know most people do that, well, uh, you're gonna lose. I'd be, I'd be beat up. We've no, all no, done not, it. not in that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, all, we've all gone back and gone, oh my God. I, I tried to do only once a day, but yeah, go <laughs> on with Bob. <laughs> but yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And, um, but yeah, it, as, soon as, you, as long as you're positive, as long as you're trying to move forward in the right direction, which is going out there and opening and doing the cold approach and uh, experimenting with positivity, then you're going to go far. And there's only a handful of people I've ever trained that have done that and they've got really far in this game. They're household names in pickup now. So there you go. I'm not going to say them, but there you go. There you go. But they're lovely people. One of, one of the uh, rules that I live by was always try and sur uh, surround yourself with um, positive people. Um, whether that's your wingman or whether that's uh, people that you hang out with. Yeah. Because doing this y you can encounter a lot of negativity so if you have the right people around you you can really go far in this game yeah, in my definitely. opinion and and I can t testify by that because I had Bob uh, for when I was starting out in the game and I was friends with Rob and he helped me immensely because of that positive influence because of the encouragement that he gave me because of the support that he w that he gave me and the belief that he had in, in me and my game and that's what that's how I met my ex-wife how funny is that 
Do you want to touch I've on that? A, Do you want I've, to touch up on that? I've helped a lot of people find their ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> can you find my next ex-wife, please? Yes, I can, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, look, I believe everyone can be better. Everyone can do something to change themselves to be better. Everyone can get a girl. And, you know, as Mishri says, there's room at the top for everyone. You know, you've got to... I, I mean, mine is just open. Open that girl. Open that girl. I know. Just open her. Don't think. Bob is ruthless open. when it comes to that. And and, and that is the, the golden rule, in my opinion. That just open. It's the golden rule. It's not <laughs> necessarily what you open with is... Which is important, don't get me wrong. It can be important, but it's opening, which is more important. Yeah, just literally, first set on your left, walk in, do it. Don't go to the bar and get drinks. Open first. Get three sets out of the way. That's the, that's the old old school yeah. way of doing it as well. Get three, three sets out of the way, because you get out of your head. Don't be in your head. Get ahead. And ahead. And then you'll do it. But you'll what about location? I, I've... Th I've experienced that I do better in some places than other places what, what do you what, what's your take on that um, can you give me an example well I can go to to one bar and you know I the, the vibe is great I can I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting results I'm, I'm striking conversations uh, I feel good and then maybe a bar across the street Similar bar, similar outlay and everything, similar music maybe, similar clientele, and I bomb. What, what, what's your what's your take on that? The take could be, so you've gone in there with a good vibe in the first place, and you've warmed up the room, you, you know, so everyone thinks, oh yeah, he's a sociable guy, so on, and they're, they're going to feel awkward not talking to you, because they're going to be practically the only ones not talking to you, because you're talking to this person, you're socially proved, you know, you're dxp yourself in a way. And you go to another bar and you, you go in with that same, oi, I like, they should automatically just speak to me because I'm, I was that cool in that other place. But you're going in, technically, you're going in cold again. Now, if you, you put a girl on an arm or a girl on each arm and walk in, different story. But you need to start again in each room. And it's good that you're going with a, a good attitude, but you're going in thinking automatically that they should be yours. Where the other place, you didn't realise, but you warmed up you're going to do your three sets to warm up until you get good and then you need one or two uh, 18 <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey sometimes you need a hundred because you're starting out exactly. or you're starting out again so, so it doesn't matter how good you are you've got to start from the beginning again so what's the first but piece memory. of advice that you would give somebody that's just starting out right now what is the first thing he should do if he wants to get into girls okay get one good cam opener one that you've practiced in the mirror you're not gonna stutter you're not gonna you're not gonna pause you're not gonna go mm, ah, mm, use para language you're just gonna say it in a fluid motion so make it an easy quick one like hey uh, just chat to my friend Allison she's in the shop over there and we were discussing you've got the second best shoes I've seen today that is a, an amazing opener. And normally they go, who's got the first? And you're in. Simple as that. But as, just learn that one. What is that? That's an easy sentence to say. Practice it 20 times in the mirror and then go and practice it 20 times in real life. And then when you use it on that 21st time, it's gonna be, you're not gonna stutter, you're gonna be crystal, you're gonna deliver it with conviction. And she's gonna feel it. She's gonna go, right, this dude just, has authority in what he's saying. I would love her to feel it. <laughs> 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 so, so Rob, um, so Rob, you're a busy man. You're uh, always traveling the globe on your magic carpet. <laughs> Tell me, what's uh, what's on your agenda for in this this summer coming up? Well, there's loads going on, but the next event I'm doing is Amsterdam. So we're doing the Evolve Elite Coaching Program. So that's been running now for about three and a half months. Which I'm part of, yours truly is part of. Yep, yep, you're one of the instructors. But it's basically uh, my 20 years condensed into <laughs> a six months to a year program 
I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of it, but we are training people. Concentrated back stuff. Yeah. And also help from, you know, my my guru friends that, you know, around the world. Of course. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be pitching in, helping out um, uh, as can much I, as possible. What, what, can you uh, share light on those names? Please? I'm not going to share light on them at the moment, but just f- think they're, they're, they're very famous in the game. Yeah, I know who they are, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you may have heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they'll be pitching in wh- where and when, it depending on what city we're in. Like LA will be one person, and you know, so on and so forth. So um, Amsterdam's the next one. Amsterdam, wow. We will be having a mystery guest, and it will be fun. Um, you'll be having a mystery guest. Yeah, a mystery guest. Is and that a clue? No, no, that's definitely not right. a clue. Okay. So um, what will be happening there is we've got ten coaches coming along. We're going to do a boot camp as well. And the coaches should be up to now shadowing and helping, getting the guys in set, giving them advice, giving them feedback and so on. With your truly stuck in there, winging, demoing and so on. So, uh, and, and some of the experienced coaches that are fully fledged coaches that have been doing it like yourself for many, many, many years. So it's going to be, yeah, it's good flow. And the one in London, Netflix actually filmed us. That's right. Yeah, and they rang us and said they wanted to do some more. So we're doing something right. I'm so happy you had a haircut the day before. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that's our next adventure. That's our next thing that we're doing. And uh, because I want coaches around the world, you know. Yeah, Bob. I mean, if they, if your coaches could have um, a quarter of the skills that you have, it, it will be very successful indeed. Well, hopefully, I can give him all of the knowledge. See, see how I give him a, a big compliment, and uh, he's so modest. He, uh, he yeah, I'm. It. I'm just waiting for the quick-witted, <laughs> smart Alec uh, put down straight afterwards. He likes to build me up and put me down, so you can never go. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Nice one. Yeah, yeah. And then he'll just put you down. <laughs> So yeah, you got you got to be wary about that one and uh, <laughs> be very humble about it. But seriously, it's 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 full on. It's everything. It's not just game. It's Sounds lifestyle. Amazing. It's wealth creation. It's learning everything from sales, marketing. It's not just game. No, it's definitely it? not. It's health, nutrition. We have experts in every field. The London one, we had eleven experts. Wow. Some of some of them. Yeah, uh, and all the experts about. And are you catering just for men, or is it, uh, are women involved also? Or can uh, women be? We have women teachers as women well teachers, right. uh, for parts of it, and you know they're uh, also wing girls, female so instructors, and so on. Everything from style, fashion, nutrition—you got it. Because I want it all in. It's a lifestyle package, not just a game package. Of We're course, going all in, people. It's all in. Of course, games extremely important. And we want that the most, but we're giving you everything as well. We're giving you all the side dishes. We're giving you the dessert. I love dessert. It's good. There's plenty of that. The 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 cream, the cream of the crop, rises to the top. So this was is a first uh, podcast that Rob and I uh, have been conducting, and we aim to bang them out regularly get quite a few of these out uh definitely on a weekly basis and on whatever platform you're listening to us uh keep on that platform we uh we would love to have a question and answer uh type session every once in a while so please if you have any questions uh that you would like to ask rob and myself if you if you prefer, uh, please send them in to Bexter at the Bexter Lifestyle dot com. But also, um, we're gonna have guests on as well. Sure, we so are. So we'll let you know in advance so you know what to ask for special guests. That'd be cool. But yeah, we just want to give some content out there. We want we want let people know that we're we're still gaming, uh, we're still alive, and uh, we are live now. We've obviously just brushed very quickly on quite a few topics today bring you up to speed but in the future we will be a bit more in depth and uh specific questions yeah concentrate fully on certain facets of game yeah so send them in and we will try and do a podcast on that as soon as possible and phil's got to go now because he's a busy man i have a little uh girl to pick up from school yeah yeah he's uh he's a daddy so you know Daddy game. Yeah, daddy game. (laughs) 
All right. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And thanks for coming over. And that's bye from me. And that's bye from him. <laughs> See you. <laughs> See you later, guys. Thanks. And if you'd like to join our Facebook group, it's The Cold Approach VIP.